clearing a space. Direct attention to your body and your stomach or chest and ask yourself, how is my life going? What is the main thing for me right now? As an issue comes up, acknowledge it and the associated sensation in your body and set it aside. Ask the question several times until all your main issues are sensed and set aside, like those bowling pins or beer bottles mentioned above. Felt sense. Pick just one of the issues. For example, maybe it's my second marriage and divorce. Stand back from it. Quietly scan your body for an unclear physical sensation that encompasses the entire problem. Take your time. Let yourself feel the unclear sense of all of that emotional weight. This is your felt sense of the issue. Handle. Ask yourself, what is the quality of this unclear felt sense? Be patient. Pretty soon, the felt sense itself will give you a word, a phrase, or an image that sums it up. That's your handle. Resonating. Spend a few moments going back and forth between the felt sense and the handle, looking for a little bodily signal that says the handle fits well. Let the felt sense and or the handle change as necessary. Asking. Now ask yourself, what is it about this issue that makes this sense so handle? Or ask, what is in this sense? Stay with the felt sense till something comes along with a shift, a slight give or release. Receiving. Receive whatever comes with the shift, even if it's only a slight release or sense of relief. This is only one shift. There will be others. My brief description of focusing is unlikely to help you, but it illustrates the simplicity of the process. I recommend you invest a little time on Focusing.org, where you'll find everything you need to quickly master this powerful, enjoyable tool for releasing the weight of your emotional baggage. Focusing is so simple that I learned to perform a round while walking the dog, driving my car, or waiting in line. If you'll spend 10 minutes focusing each day for just one week, I'm confident you'll enjoy a delightful feeling of lightheartedness you had long forgotten. I focus first thing in the morning, right after a little bitch slapping and my TBI exercise. I run through one or two rounds to release any issues that might have surfaced during my sleep, so I can start my day with more energy. Give it a try. You might wonder why I didn't mention focusing at the beginning of this book, so you could dump a bunch of emotional baggage right at the start. Honestly, I thought about it, but I had to assume you lacked the life force needed to work your way through a six-step program focused on unpleasant feelings in your body. All I dared to ask for at that point was a bit of micro-slash-hacking and some persistent bitch-slapping. Now I believe you have enough life force flowing to support a few rounds of focusing. We invested considerable time into Hack 7, Chief Body Officer, because I'm convinced the body and mind are symbiotic and codependent. Depression and anxiety create a downward spiral for both mind and body, so reversing the spiral requires changes in both mental and physical activity. At this point in Unleashing the Seven, you, hopefully, possess the energy and intent needed to embrace your role of Chief Body Officer and to transform your body into a cherished ally. Set your vision, goals, and strategy, and give your body the resources you know it needs, starting today. You now own all seven life hacks needed to be the dominator we envisioned in the opening pages of this little book. I'm proud of you. Thank you for hanging in there with me. To finish our discussion, let's consider what now?